Race relations are at a very strained place in our country. Probably the most strained they've been since the 1960s. How do we talk about race and diversity in this polarized climate? This is our attempt. We spoke with students and lifelong Hazelwood residents. We talked to local businesses and clergy. We spoke with victims of the justice system and we spoke with people who are part of the justice system. We even sat down and talked amongst ourselves. We had one simple question that we started with. Are race relations worse or better and why do you think that way? Through the following conversations, it is our hope that you will begin to have similar conversations with the people you encounter in your daily life. And maybe our different experiences can enrich our shared experiences. Okay, we are here once again uh, for our Hazelwood, uh, Greater Hazelwood Diversity Dialogue. And we are, um, we are, have the benefit of the, uh, the pleasure of uh, hosting uh, two of our business owners that are here in the community that are serving our community members, both uh, through uh, the Elizabeth Pharmacy and through C&D's uh, restaurant that is down on 2nd Avenue. Both of them have been in the community for many years and uh, really servicing so many of uh, the people that are in our community. And I'll, I'll just want to let them quickly introduce themselves, say who they are, and, and, and then we'll go into our discussion. So we'll start with uh, Brother Cletus. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cletus Helton, and uh, I'm the owner, co-owner of C&D's Kitchen. All right. I'm Joe Brake. Uh, I own Elizabeth Pharmacy, came to Hazelwood in 1977, and worked the pharmacy till I bought it in 2011. That's great. Well, both of y'all have very, very famous places <laughs> on the <laughs> avenue. <laughs> Everybody knows where you all are, yes. and uh, you know, because you all, you all have been there for, of course, Elizabeth Pharmacy been there for... 1910. Yeah, 1910. <laughs> 1910. Yeah. That's a long mm -hmm. journey. That, that was... was I wasn't there for the beginning. Yeah, I wasn't there that for was the that. opening. <laughs> yeah, that was before my father. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we've been talking about uh, race relations. We've been talking about diversity issues uh, over the last several months. We've talked with several groups uh, in Hazelwood and groups from, that are not from Hazelwood, but we brought people together to talk about these issues. You know, we have, uh, we're in a climate right now where our politicians are, are going at each other really, really hard. We find uh, race issues coming up uh, within politics. Uh, we find in people uh, that are losing patience with each other, whether it be behind the wheel of a car or somebody with a gun, you know, on and on. Uh, we're seeing, it seems like it's just escalated over the last several years. And, um, and, and I guess the question is, you know, why? Is, is it all about race? Is it, is it about other things, you know? Uh, because when, when, when people have problems with other people from other races, you have to be trained, you have to be taught to, to, to have those thoughts and those ideas, you know? And if you can uh, sort of reteach yourself, you know, learn. You know, one of the ways that we learn not to use stereotypes and have preconceived notions is by making sure that we build relationships with people and get to know people, you know. Um, once you get to know somebody, it's kind of hard to have something against them when you don't really know them at all, you know. Some people don't know people at all and they judge them just yeah. by the way they look. Yeah. And um, we know that that was going on many years ago, you know. When you was talking about 1910, it was going on back in 1910. You know, but the you know, but but how how could that be still going on today? You know, how could there still be groups out here that either don't like you because you're black or because you're or you're Jewish or because you're whatever you know you're Ukraine or whatever the case might be? Why how could there still be groups that still are like that? You know, and uh, and are teaching their kids you know to dislike people of another race, uh, especially in this. Uh, at this time that we're living in, you know, it's 2018, you know, and we're still dealing with some of those things. But um, 
I was just wondering, you know, what you all think about the way things are going right now. You know, we have a, we have a fairly relatively new president. Um, he's never, you know, he hasn't been in office that long. He still has uh, another it couple seems of years. It only really seems he's been in there a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it only really seems. <laughs> you know, and, and, well, and, and then we, we also have, you know, we have so many different political officials that are out there that are struggling with this, this, this racial tension these racial tension issues in their cities and in their states and things. And it's not that it's not that it wasn't there all the time, but it's that, you know, it's rising up more where it's right in our faces now. And in the South, people dealt with this every day, all the time. But when you start getting up north, it was more covert. It was more under the covers, you know, and people people did their thing more or less in secret. But today that's changing. So I wanted to get your take on whether you feel like relationships between the races are better or worse at this point. I think it depends on where where you're looking, but uh, in many instances, it's not real good right now. And it doesn't help that you have people in the higher up that are stoking the coals that are really instigating this because there's really no excuse for it to be the way it is. There's no excuse for it. Yeah. What do you think, Cletus? I think um, it might be a little political, my thought, but my thought is this. <clears throat> I think the, the president himself I think this is his tactic to divide. When you divide the country, you conquer the country. If you got us constantly bickering, we can't watch what you're doing. In my opinion, he's just raping the country financially because he goes only to his places. He steals all the money. I mean, he, he makes millions of dollars every trip for his companies every time he goes somewhere. And I think all this rhetoric stuff is to keep us fighting so we can't pay attention. Oh, his, his, you, whole, you know, his whole uh, political agenda is a smokescreen. Is a smokescreen. That's what, oh, that's what no I doubt. feel. I've lived in Hazelwood since 92. I live on Ashton Avenue, up off Elizabeth. And... My kids went to Three Rivers Indian Council. Then they went to St. Stephen's. St. Stephen's closed. They went to Greenfield, St. Roselia. You know, and they basically stayed in a um, private setting, you know, even now in college because they both go to St. Vincent mm -hmm. in Latrobe. But um, I put them in that atmosphere knowing that they were going to be the minority. And I put them there to learn how to grow and deal with every nationality. You know, I have, I have the white kids. I have um, an Indian kid. I have um, Italian kids. You know, they all come and they stay at my house. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, I don't teach it. It's not allowed at my house and even at my business. I can honestly say that my business is 50, 50 and I have a soul food restaurant and my business is 50, 50, half white, half black shop in my store, you know, all the time. I love it. See, I don't. I don't look it and see it. I swear I don't. And you know, I'm a God fearing man too, you know. And I and 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 you know, I just I just believe that if you read that Bible and understand that Bible, there's no way that I could hate you, or I could hate you, or I could hate him. There's no way. For what? You know, you all are business owners and as business owners, I'm sure that uh, you've seen your challenges 
over the years in different areas of, uh, of businesses, you know, uh, that you're dealing with, you know, do you ever run into any challenges as a business owner where you feel like, you know, this is happening to you because of your race, you know, or because of your age or because of your, you know, because of where you live, because of, because you're in Hazelwood, you know, have you ever run in, into any of those kinds of things? I, I really can't say I have. I, I haven't either. Oh. I really have. I actually, I actually believe that, like, I've had help from everybody mm -hmm. in opening and opening our business. We've had help from not only the community of Hazelwood, but outside the community. You know, different vendors and things like that. I mean. I mean, we. I, I've had help. I haven't mm -hmm. seen any mm -hmm. um, any issues like you know, yeah, race related. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hazelwood has always been a very diverse community. A uh, lot of different kinds of people who live in this community, and uh, and yet, you know, in the past there was a time when Hazelwood was, even though there was diversity in the community, it was still uh, segregated. Uh, it operated as a segregated community. It used to be Hazelwood, PA, you know. Mm. Um, had its own mayor and had its own, you know, chamber of commerce, everything. Uh, but it was, a, it was a segregated community. I think there was still a bit of a closeness there, but when I listen to some of the stories of some of the people who grew up here years, many years ago, right. they talk about uh, the uh, uh, b uh, below the tracks and, mm -hmm. you know, on the other side of the tracks, you know. When I first started here, it was... Yeah, I'm from below the tracks, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that referred to too much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, it's really interesting how it seems like that's a, a, a bit of a characteristic of Pittsburgh people. We talk about where we're from. You know, when, we, when somebody asks us, you know, they talk, when we talk about where we're from, a lot of times we'll say, well, I'm from Hazelwood. Um, uh, it's that, like, where you, if you went to... You know, I don't know. If you went to Boston, they would say, well, you know, I'm from Boston. You know, mm -hmm. um, They wouldn't necessarily address what neighborhood they were from. But in it's Pittsburgh, Boston. we address the neighborhood. We, we, go, we go there. I think you know? there's a sense of pride in, in your home neighborhood mm -hmm. in all of Pittsburgh. Mostly everyone in Pittsburgh, doesn't matter what neighborhood they're from, mm -hmm. they have a pride in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They really yes. do. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think so. I think people do kind of attach to the neighborhood that they're in. Yes. Um, and no matter how many challenges they may, may experience. Mm -hmm. But you all mentioned, you mentioned the president, uh, and you know, I'm certainly not trying to let the president off the hook. I think uh, he, he has, a, as a leader, as a world leader, and the leader of our country, he has a responsibility to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about, you know, when you go beyond that, when you go beyond the distraction of the president, and you think about the behavior of, of, of of people that are not president, you know, mm -hmm. the things that people are doing, you know. What do you think is causing that? I think, um, I think the president's rhetoric is what caused it. He's, he's let people believe that now it's all right to say and do whatever you want. He basically demonstrated that through his through his presidency, through through his through his candidacy, you know, he he says whatever he wants, does whatever he wants, and he makes people think that it's just okay. Don't you think that people have to be responsible for their own actions? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, you know, they do. I, th I think here's a problem that uh, here's my my thoughts: that children aren't born to hate; they have to be taught that, mm. and somehow that cycle has to be broken because generation after generation being brought up by certain by families or whatever to hate other people and, and somehow that has to be broken because the child is born without that hatred in their heart and it's only taught to them that's mm -hmm. right that's right I, I couldn't agree with you more and, and I think that I think that you know it takes a while when you've been conditioned to hate another group of people it takes a while to get that out of you you, ha you have to be re reconditioned you know, re reconditioned in your mind and, and your your perceptions and everything to see people uh, as equals, you being equal to them. Um, I think that people, 
should be responsible for their actions. You know, you know, if somebody is uh, in the middle of the street having a fight with somebody else, and uh, you're walking past there and you see that, and you're not going to jump in it or nothing, but it may, but you get angry about it. It's not so much that what they're doing is making you angry; it's that what you're, the way you're looking at it is making you angry. And I think that people look at, whether it be our president or many, any other politicians, and, and, and they get angry, uh, and they have to be, I think we all have to be more um, responsible for the way we respond to different things. Because I think we can get involved and try to be a part of the solution. Uh, but when we are, when we just get angry about it and we point the finger, then I think that's where some of our problems come in because nobody can, you know, I mean, we can, we can blame different people for different things, but they're on television, <laughs> you know, they're, they're in a, they're in la la land, you know, yes, we're here, you know, we're here in the real world and we're dealing with real issues every single day. You know, I know you all see customers every day. You see people with real everyday problems mm -hmm. and challenges and successes. And, and they're coming and they're shopping in your businesses, you know, they're, they're, they're utilizing your, your, you know, your businesses and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I think, I think it's, it's really important these days when you're, when you're going into an environment that, that's a, a business, a public business, to have an environment where people can feel comfortable. You know, when I think about the, the young man uh, down south who, what was it, in a Kroger's? And um, somebody came in and shot him in the head. And I thought, oh, yeah. I thought, what? You know, mm -hmm. you can't go to Kroger's, you know? And of course, we, we know what happened up at the Tree of Life uh, mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, you know? All those people who were, were killed and, and wounded as well uh, because somebody went in. Isn't it a disgrace, though, that it takes a tragedy like that to bring a community together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It brought... Everybody in Pittsburgh together, but it took a tragedy to do that. You know? Yes, it that's, did. That's a sad part. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. It is sad. It's it's so sad. There's so much hatred in the world. Period. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's sad. It really is because there's really no place for it. For real. I mean, there's so much that we could do in life to help one another, to enjoy one another, mm -hmm. that you can't even do because everybody's worried about what's going to be said or mm -hmm. what somebody thinks mm -hmm. or, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really sad. Yeah, yeah it is. There, there's a lot of that. And, and I think that, you know, I, 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 um, I applaud you all because you all both have businesses in this community that have great reputations. You know, you, you, people know that they can go to Elizabeth Farmley. They know they can go over to C&D's. They know and, and, uh, and get good service, be treated with respect and dignity, you know, uh, get what they need. Or if they can't, if they don't have what they need, y'all might show them where they can go and get, you know, what they exactly. need. Exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. I, think, I think those things are important today where, you know, there are, there are places you can go in this city where you can walk in to a business and, and not receive the kind of service that you you deserve, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or not be treated like not a valuable, welcome. comfortable. Yeah, not feel welcome. welcome. Yeah, yeah. There are places you can go, and you got to ask yourself, why open up a business and have that kind of environment? You know, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's money walking out the door. Why would you <laughs> want to alienate half Customers. the population? You know, it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so do you all ever see? Uh, Things happen in your stores that 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 uh, you feel might be racially uh, motivated, where people may have come in and maybe some interactions that may seem. I had an little... incident a few months ago where a fella came in and was spouting out racial slurs, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. physically had to have him removed from the store. Wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was uh, high up on something, but yeah, mm -hmm. you know. It's not an excuse. It's a no. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a crutch. Yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because it, usually when uh, when you're doing that when you're high, it's the inhibitions are no longer going, and that's what you feel when you're not. That's right. You exactly. Know? 
Exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, why choose that? There's so many other things that they, if you're high, there's so many other things you can you can bang on, mm -hmm. but you go straight to you know racial slurs and hate uh, comments and things. That's like you said, it's in there. It just needs to be stirred up. And, mm -hmm. the, and the, I'm happy to say that's that was such a rare event. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, those are things that that are so important. You know, I mean, with shootings in churches and synagogues and hospitals and you know, I mean, it's, it's really, it's amazing, you know, the, the, the access that, you know, there was a time in Hazelwood where kids had access to guns. You they can get a gun like that, you know. And, you know, when we talk about gun laws and everything, there is, we need gun laws, but we need, we need even more than that. We, we, need, we need common sense. Yes. You know, we need common sense and, and love for our fellow human being, mm -hmm. because uh, you can have all the gun laws in the world, and I think we should have some gun laws. Mm -hmm. But you can have all the gun laws in the world, and people don't use common sense; they're still going to use that gun. Yes, they are. They're still going to use it in the wrong way. They, mm -hmm. You know, people are going to get killed. And yeah. um, you're right, because if they don't use their brain, they're going to use something. And if they take away the guns, they're going to bring knives. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're going to bring other weapons. There's going to be something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like you say, it's the, they have to be educated yeah. about love. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing that's yeah. going to break this, yeah. the education of love. When everybody can really get along, see that you really can get along and coexist, I mean... It's mm -hmm. been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. People have been coexisting, and, and we should continue. We should try to get back to it today. Let me ask you all a couple of other questions. Um, when you were growing up, if you can kind of go back, go back a little bit uh, as you were growing up, can you remember some of the experiences that you had in the neighborhoods where you were growing up, you know, um, what it was like? maybe some of the things that you heard growing up. And do you see uh, that, that it is different today? Or do you see, you think that there's still a lot of the same stuff going on? Well, I grew up in Carrick and it was uh, pretty much a, uh, not a very diverse community growing up. Mm -hmm. It was mostly a white community when I grew up. Mm -hmm. It's became more diverse over the years. It's, it's, uh, Pretty well mixed community now. Yeah. Uh, Did you? But, but growing up, so so, it was it was a white community. But even though most of the people were white, they were all different. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. They all they, there's diversity in, still, in every culture. Still, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, and so so I guess part of what I'm trying to get at is, what was your experience growing up? Like, what did you hear? You know, so if you grew up in an all-white neighborhood, what were you hearing maybe about black people or about maybe about Asians or about, you know, you know Italians or, you know, what were you hearing growing up? And do you hear those kinds of things today, you know? Yeah, well, I grew up in central Pennsylvania. I grew up in a small town called Mount Union. Mount Union. Population of about 3,000 people. Okay, is where I grew up. My parents, it's 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 a town that it's probably had mixed. Out of three thousand people, there was probably fifteen hundred blacks, fifteen hundred white. Mm -hmm. It was basically even, right? In my, so you hear you hear a lot, and then there's a bunch of little towns outside of my town where there was still Ku Klux Klan. I mean, in my town, they used to come burn crosses, all that stuff. So I, I mean, I experienced seeing all that crosses burnt. I mean, um, all that stuff. Then my parents worked at, in State College, where Penn State University is. My father was a, a mechanic at a Buick dealership, and my mother was a maid. She cleaned houses. She cleaned houses for a lot of the top people at Penn State University, right? So it gave 
it gave my brothers and sisters and I a chance to to be in that diversity. Mm -hmm. You know, we we you know they would take us to all like the Penn State football games, and you know we got to ride in the Goodyear blimp, all that type of stuff <laughs> from you know from the contacts that my parents had. So we seen where back in our little town where everybody was like, you know, you got to hate the white guy over there, you got to hate the white guy over there, and this and that. And then my parents would tell us, listen, man, you can't hate nobody, mm -hmm. right? There's good in every race. There's mm -hmm. good. There's bad in every race. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But you have to learn to distinguish who's who. <clears throat> Don't prejudge because of what somebody looks like or what they, you know what I mean? Or, or anything like that. Get the norm and judge for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, like I said, I've seen both sides, you know. But it, but it just made me. It made me know how I wanted to raise my kids, mm -hmm. you know, not to hate on either side. You know what I mean? Because, like you say, you have to be taught it. And if you're not taught it, you know what I mean. You, you know, you don't understand it. You, you know, you never do. You never would. You know. Yeah. Do you think it's better today than it was back then? Um, yeah, I think I think it is. I think it's better today than it was then. That was in the '60s, you know what I mean? When I when I was growing up back there in the '60s, you know, and I, I, when I left there, I left there in the late '70s, and um, it was um, a lot better. <laughs> and it's way better there today. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. We still own a home up there, so I still go there. You know what I mean? A lot so. But um, yeah, I think it's better that today because I think the last two generations, the kids going through school and I stopped seeing skin color. They're friends with their friends, whoever their friends are. It doesn't matter skin color, doesn't matter religion at all. Mm -hmm. I think it, that's changed a lot. I see that the you're right. These last two generations, that yeah. whoever you are. If we get along, if we if we have anything in common, we're going to be friends. And it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what church you go to. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah. mm. I see that a lot yeah. uh, more so than as I was growing up. Mm -hmm. What do you think some of the messages that we could send out to our community and maybe other communities uh, uh, about uh, the, the tension and things that people are feeling today. Um, but what, what are your thoughts about what we could well, say of, to them and encourage first them? First of all, I think it prejudiced and, and uh, hatred are based on fear. I think it, they're afraid of people. Not, not, not even just skin colors. I don't mean a white's afraid of black or black, afraid of white. I think you're afraid of anything that's different. And, it's, and what needs to be done is you need to spend time with these other people to find out just how much you really are alike, not how much different mm. you are. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Hey, that makes me think of uh, my neighbor. When I moved on Ashton, it was an older gentleman, Mr. Jim Crookshank, lived next door. His house I was... Remember Mr. Crookshank. You know Mr. Jim? Yeah. His house was basically boarded up like a fortress. Mm. He would come out in his yard, and he'd be out in his yard. He had a beautiful garden, and he'd be out there in his garden. In the moment, like that, we would come outside, or my kids would come outside. He would be, he would go back in his house. You know what I mean? So my son was about three years old, and one day he was, he was there, and Mr. Jim was going back in his house, and he said, Mr. Jim. Are you afraid of me? Because you keep running in the house when I come outside. He said, son, I'm not afraid of you. I'm afraid of everything. Mm. He told him, he said, I'm afraid of everything. Wow. You know, and that was, I mean, that shook me. You know what I mean? And I said, it's crazy. But this man, this same man, when it was snow, I mean, it's things like that. I would always shovel his walk when I shoveled mine, you know, and in the back. And I was doing a little, I was fixing my, my, my 
concrete pad out front. He had one that was broke beside mine, right? So he came out there and he was like, he was like, I was watching you fix that pad, that other pad the other day. He said, and then you started fixing this. He said, you think you could fix that pad for me right there? <laughs> and I said, sure, I could do that, you know? So I fixed the concrete pad. And then uh, a couple months later, I was doing some other work in the back and out in front of his garage, he had a little piece that needed some concrete work. I fixed that for him. Long story short, a couple, you know, 10 years later, he gets sick, his wife gets sick. And, and I didn't see him for a long time. And one day this lady came and knocked on my door and she said, uh, Mr. Jim would like to talk to you, right? And uh, I said, okay. And so I went over there. Me and my wife, we walked over there. And uh, that was the first time I was ever in his house. We had been neighbors 15 years, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, he told me, he said this, and he said, um, I'm not going to be around too much longer. Mm. He said, my nieces, he had no kids. He said, my nieces, he had two nieces. He said, I've given them, I've given them all my money, right? He said, I never met somebody as nice as you, and I want you to have my house. That man gave me his house. See, so what could I say about Hazelwood? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. This man gave me his house. It took, it took him to, to get to know you he, to yeah. take that fear away from him. Yeah, it took the fear away. There's the same man told my son that he was afraid of everything. Mm. You know, I get tears in my eyes thinking yeah. about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, you know, you don't, you know, things like that don't happen all the time. That's right. That's a great story. But that was a, that was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Truly blessed. That's amazing. Yes, it was. Well, that, and that's just proof of what you say. You know, when you get to know people, uh, you have more reasons to be together than you do to be separate from each other. Yeah. And I think yeah. these are the days, the days that we live in right now are times when we need to lean into each other. More and more, we need to lean into each other and close ranks and oh, yeah. really, really uh, continue to lock arms and walk together in peace and in <laughs> love and... Uh, understand that we are much more alike than we are different, you know? Yes, we are. And it's a destiny that causes all of us to be related, you know? We're born mm -hmm. and we die. Yes, <laughs> yes. And the yes. dash in between. Ain't nobody, yeah. ain't nobody been able to beat that cycle yet. <laughs> nope, 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 can't get away from that one. So I, I, I would ask you all this question then, uh, just that we could talk about this just a little bit. Uh, one of the things that we have here in our community is a thing called the Greater Hazelwood Community Collaborative. <clears throat> and it's a collaboration of community-based and non-community-based service providers, people who provide services, whether it's businesses or nonprofits or churches or, you know, different kinds of organizations that serve in the community. Now, some come in, <clears throat> there are some businesses that have come into the community, but we didn't know they were coming. And... Um, they just set up shop and they went to doing business. And because of the kind of community that Hazelwood is, you know, Hazelwood will tend to utilize people's businesses, but, you know, they, they're suspect of people who just come in and just set up and just, you know, they didn't come to any community meetings. They didn't introduce themselves. They didn't, you know, they didn't build relationships. They just came into this community. You know, it's one thing if you do that in the cultural district down in the strip. <laughs> Right. But it's another thing when you come into a community like Hazelwood and you do something like that. And so, you know, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on, on something like this because I think that the community deserves uh, respect in that area. You know, pe people who want to do business here should care about the people who live in this community, you know. And I think when you just come in, you set up shop and you just go to work, uh, I think there's a lack of, a little lack of respect there, but I don't know what you thought, what you all think. Um, I think so too. I think so too. I think it's a, uh, if, if, you know, if you don't have a, a foothold in the community, like you say, I think you should be, uh, you should come, you know, do, do, do the groundwork, get to know yeah. the people, find out really what the community needs and see if the business that you're trying to bring is what the community needs, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
but at, and at the same time, though, you know, the community needs businesses. Right. You know, we need right. we need a grocery store bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I think and a gas station that I think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, where in the community do we find the people for those businesses? If nobody in the community is willing to take on that task, then for the betterment of the community, you got to get somebody from outside. Mm -hmm. If it's all for the betterment of the community, I would prefer that it would come from within. Mm -hmm. But if it can't come from within, I don't want to stop the project. Right. Right. You know? No, I don't think it's realistic to assume that all businesses would come from within. Mm -hmm. But I do think that if you have a business come in, that if they expect the community to support them, they also have to support the community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and that could mean right. supporting this community could mean several different things. It mean could mean different things for different businesses. Mm -hmm. But uh, some you know some businesses just have they just have a lot of resources and they can do whatever they want. So a lot of a lot of them never never reach out to the community at all. They just come in because they have a lot of money and a lot of resources. Where other businesses are grassroots, they're mm -hmm. starting, they're pushing, they, 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 you know, they're paying their dues and they're building relationships with people. And they tend to be the ones that you know by their first name, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know who they are, you know. Exactly. Like, for, particular about you all's businesses. Is everybody that I know knows about both your businesses. Everybody that I know, you know, knows about both your businesses. And, mm -hmm. and, and I know a lot of people <laughs> in this community, you know. Yes, sir. Um, and so, and, and I, think it says, I, think, I think it says a lot. I think it says a lot. And, uh, but I think that... Uh, <clears throat> I do think that Hazelwood has, you know, our hands are out. We're not pushing back. We're saying, hey, come on and join with us. Let's, let's get to know each other and let's work together. You know, put some of our young people to work. You know, yes. give some of them a job, you know. Yes. Um, don't just come in and bring all your employees and don't em employ anybody from the community, community because this is a community that needs job opportunities, you know. Yes, it does. Um, so that you know, and, and, and there's times where, where organizations may come in and they don't feel obligated to do anything like that. They just feel like you know we have a business, and people will come. They'll, they'll call themselves a destination business, where people will come from, say the south side, or they'll come from the north side all the way over to just come to that business. You know, mm -hmm. you know, south side has a lot of those kind of businesses that are, yes, they but do. they call destination places. You know, restaurants all up and down there, <clears throat> and if you walk up and down. Uh, East Carson Street, there'll be somebody in every one of those restaurants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thinking, oh, yeah. yeah. That, yes, that, that makes mm -hmm. them a destination because they came all the way over to a street filled with restaurants and they went to one. Yes. <laughs> and yes. blocked for parking like crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir. Well, I tell you, it's, it's, it's been such a pleasure uh, meeting both of you and, and having a chance to talk. I, I know you both do great business in this community. You're well respected. And we are proud to have businesses like you all in Hazelwood. And you're a model, you know, for I believe what, what, what businesses can be like, community-based businesses can be like, and how you can serve in a community and to, the bet, to, to the point of empowering the community. And, uh, and we hope that you'll stay here for as long as you can in any way that we can assist we want to be. We want to assist, and we want to support uh, in any way that we can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>